Good morning, children. Welcome back to the science class. In the previous class, we have learnt about electricity, potential and potential difference, the different types of electricity, then Ohm's law, and Joule's law, that is the heating effect of electricity. Today, let us learn about the magnetic effect of electric current. So the new chapter, that's your chapter number 30, magnetic effect of electricity. Let us see what is it. So let's see what is the magnetic effect of electric current and how is it produced. So previously we have learned about the heating effect of electricity that is when an electric current passes through a conductor it produces heat due to the collision of the moving ions and the atoms of the conductor. So now a Dutch scientist namely Hans Oersturt observed that electricity and magnetism are related to each other. And an electric current carrying wire behaves like a magnet. So, what Oersturt told was that there is some relationship between electricity and magnetism. You know what is magnetism? The magnet can attract magnetic substances towards it. So that is what a magnetism. So the scientist Oersturt told that there is a relationship between electricity and magnetism. That is, an electric current carrying wire behaves like a magnet. So he conducted experiments on this and he has given the statements for certain terms that are related to the magnetic effect of electric current. So let us see some terms related to this. So the first one is magnetic field. So you might be studied in the lower classes what is magnetic field. The space around a magnet in which the force of the magnet can be detected is called the magnetic field. You know, around a magnet, it can experience or it can exert a certain force of attraction as well as repulsion. And this space around the magnet is known as magnetic field. And the magnetic field is stronger near the poles of a bare magnet. You know, bare magnet. So, its strength will be more near the poles of the bare magnet. So, I hope in A standard you have studied some experiment related to this. That is, you can see here, 
in the picture. Thus, a bar magnet is shown with iron filings that is attached in a particular pattern. Here you can see at both the ends of the magnet, more iron filings are attached and the remaining space, it is arranged as concentric rings. So if some powder of iron is sprinkled around a bare magnet, it is spread evenly and the bare magnet exerts magnetic force in the region surrounding it. This force makes the iron filings arranged in a regular pattern. So that is what you can see here. The iron filings are attached to the poles of the magnet and they got arranged in a particular pattern. Now, let us see the next term related to the magnetic field. That is magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines are a set of imaginary lines used to represent the magnetic field of a magnet. So already we have learned that a magnet can exert, can experience a magnetic field around it. So this field can be represented by certain imaginary lines and these lines are known as magnetic field lines and these lines can be plotted by using a magnetic compass you know compass magnetic compass the round structure with a needle you know it always directs to the north south direction you might be seeing a magnetic compass. So magnetic field lines can be plotted by using a magnetic compass. So when a bar magnet is brought near a compass, it exerts a magnetic force on the magnetic needle of the compass. This makes the compass needle deflects. So inside the compass, there's a needle, a magnetic needle. It gets deflects when a bare magnet is brought near to the compass needle. And this deflection can be plotted as lights, which are known as magnetic field lights. You can see here in the picture one bar magnet is shown here with certain lines surrounding it. These lines are called the magnetic field lines. And let us see what are the properties of these lines. So magnetic field lines are imaginary. They are not actual lines. They are imaginary lines. They form closed loops. You can see here the line starts from the north pole and it ends in the south pole. Some of the lines you can see here. See up and down. That is starting from the north and ending in the south pole. So they form closed loops. And they never intersect. Again you can see here. These lines are not intersecting each other. And magnetic field lines are dense near the poles of a magnet. So near the poles, the number of lines will be more in the previous topic about a magnetic field. We have seen that the iron filings are getting attached more at the poles of the magnet. 
because uh, the strength is more at the poles. So because of that only, the magnetic field lines are dense near the poles of a magnet. So magnetic field lines are the imaginary lines used to represent the magnetic field of a magnet. Next, let us see how the magnetic field will be created when current passes through a straight conductor. You can see here in the picture that a straight conducting wire is arranged by using a rectangular cardboard box, a cardboard plate. Okay. Now let us see how the magnetic field will be created. A conductor carrying current produces a magnetic field around it. The strength of the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current passing through it. So here you can see the arrangements. So let us see what are the arrangements. Okay. So there is a rectangular or square shaped cardboard piece through which a straight conducting copper wire is inserted and the wire is connected to the terminals of a bed. A resistance and an ammeter is connected to measure the current. And you can see some dotted circles on the cardboard. Actually they are not lines. So at the starting of the experiment, we spray some iron filings on that cardboard uniformly. We are spraying some iron filings, that powder, iron powder. Then, when the current passes through that conductor, you can see it is shown by arrow mark. The current is flowing through the conductor downwards, see through the cardboard downwards through the copper wire. So when current passes through that conductor, the iron filings are get arranged in a circular pattern around the conductor wire. You can see there, small circles and even larger circles are there. So when electricity passes through this conductor, the iron filings are getting arranged in circular pattern around the conductor. Okay, children. Now let us see. If we keep a small compass, you can see there it is marked as P with one compass, one, one structure we can see there. That's a compass. Compass. Okay. If we place a compass needle on that cardboard near to that conducting wire. What we can observe is that if the current in the conductor flows downwards as shown in the picture, the current in the conductor flows downwards, then the direction of magnetic field lines is in clockwise direction. The magnetic field lines that circles will be formed in clockwise direction which is shown in the picture. See the arrow mark after that P. You can see one arrow mark which is clockwise. So when the current flows downwards through the conductor, the iron particles will get arranged in circles in clockwise direction. Okay. That means the magnetic field lines are in clockwise direction. And if we change the terminals 
of the battery and allow the current to flow upwards. Okay, if you just change the terminals of the battery. Change and connect. The current flows then upwards. So if the current in the conductor flows upwards, the direction of magnetic field lines is in anti-clockwise. So immediately when we disconnect this battery, all the iron powder, they will be dispersed again because there is no current, so they cannot attach each other. Okay. And again, we are reconnecting this circuit by changing the terminals of the battery so that now the current flows upwards through the conductor. Again, the magnetic, uh, sorry, the iron filings will get arranged in circular pattern, but it will be getting arranged in the opposite direction. So when the direction of current changes, the direction of that magnetic field also changes. Understood children? So that is the concept. If the direction of current flow changes, the direction of magnetic field also changes. Okay? Now, let us see what about the magnitude of that field. The magnitude of magnetic field at a point increases as the current through the wire increases. If we send more current through the wire, the magnetic field also gets increased. Its strength will increase. And the strength of magnetic field produced decreases as the distance of the point from the current carrying conductor increases. If you can see there are three circles are there. One is very closer to the conducting wire and two are far away from that. So, if the distance from the conducting wire increases, the strength of magnetic field decreases. Understood children? So, the magnetic field strength will be more closer to the conducting wire as it goes away the magnetic strength will be decreased. So we have can represent it like this. The first one, that is the magnetic field, strength of magnetic field is directly proportional to the current passing through it. That is B is proportional to I. Well, B is the magnetic field strength and I is the current. And the second fact is that the strength of the magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance from the conductor. As we told, when the distance increases, the strength will be decreased. So we can write B is inversely proportional to the distance. That is, as it is in circular form, we can represent the distance by the letter R. It is a radius of the circle. So B is proportional to 1 by Oh. Understood children? So this is the magnetic field created due to a current carrying straight conduct. Okay? So if we change the direction of current, the direction of magnetic field also will be changed. If we change the strength of current, the strength of magnetic field also changes. And if the distance is more, the magnetic field will be decreased. So now we told the magnetic field will be in clockwise direction and a clockwise direction like that. Okay. So, how can we prove it? How can we prove that it will be in a clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction?
Let us see that. Now let's see how to find the direction of magnetic field. The direction of magnetic field around the current carrying conductor can be found by right hand thumb rule. Right hand thumb rule states that if a current carrying conductor is supposed to be held in the right hand such that the thumb points towards the direction of current, then the direction of curl of fingers around the conductor will show the direction of the lines of the magnetic field. Then, thus, by using the right hand thumb rule, we can find the direction of magnetic field around a current carrying straight conductor. I hope you understood this. The right hand thumb rule is very, very important at the point of view of the exam. So go through this video two or three times, then read your textbook, try to understand. It's all simple things, but you have to concentrate on that. Okay children. In the next class, we will learn about the creation of magnetic field, the formation of magnetic field around different types of conductors. Today we have learned only about a straight conductor and around a bar magnet. So without passing electricity, how the magnetic field lines are formed around a bar magnet and by passing electricity through a conductor, how the magnetic field lines are forms. Thank you children.